What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. I am a number one best-selling science fiction author and comic creator. You can go to my Amazon page in the description below. Check out my books. Hope you will do so. Appreciate everybody who supports the channel and our creative efforts that way. All right, this is Iron Man by Mike Grell, The Complete Collection. This actually was not on my radar when it came out earlier this year. I totally missed that this was even a thing, and I think a lot of people did. And I'm noticing that it is getting a little bit harder to find at this point, so you might want to pick this up if this seems interesting to you. Now, uh, Marvel's done a pretty good job at now getting Heroes Reborn, or post-Heroes Reborn, rather, into collected edition. There is a Iron Man by Kurt Busiek Omnibus, which starts off that run. There then is... The Man in the Iron Mask Omnibus, which continues that. And then now there's Mike Grell. And that, and they're all in order. You don't miss any issues uh, between those three if you are interested in reading everything in order, which I actually like doing. So uh, that, was, that was a nice uh, little run. So uh, this covers Iron Man 50 through 69, and uh, it's by Mike Grell. The last story is almost entirely written by Robin Laws, and so uh, Mike Grell gets a plot credit at the beginning of that. Uh, but uh, it seems that's kind of where he ended his run on this. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, I wasn't really sure about this. When I got into the first issues, we had a, we had a Iron Man 50, which is which is kind of a one-off thing. And the art's okay on it. Uh, it's a little little on the cartoony side with some, some stiff faces at some points, uh, like you see right here. And uh, I don't know what they're doing with Black Widow's uh, sort of uh, anatomy there, but that looks kind of painful. Looks like she has giant legs. I know it's a perspective shot, but it still looks like she has giant legs and not much of a torso. Uh, oh, well. So we go over Iron Man's origin in this storyline again. Uh, and then we have a sort of a war scenario where he's helping out this lady and, and getting her to safety uh, over the course of issue 50. It is double sized. I also don't like. I'm not a big fan of uh, inks that uh, have have outlines that are this thick. Generally, I feel, I feel like it just like takes the character out of the shot, and they're getting a little too cutesy with the uh, the layouts here, where this character is like on top of this deal, like a montage. It just doesn't work out, in my opinion. But that's okay. The artists really fluctuate and change over the course of this uh, book. I think, uh, yeah, there's there's a, there's a ton of different pencilers through here. Iron Man 51 starts off this story where uh, Iron Man is, uh, or Tony Stark, rather, is picking up a, uh, a hooker. <laughs> and not, not for the reasons you think. Uh, he's actually bringing her to his, like, little, like, safe house thing in the middle of uh, the city to rescue her and try to get her into a different spot. Uh, and this is Mike, Michael Ryan on the art here. Um, very odd. You know, again, I, I think this, I'm not, I'm not entirely in love with the figures or the drawings in here. Like this just doesn't look like it's even in the same, you know, realm. She looks like a, a midget standing right there on a box <laughs> in comparison, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and so Iron Man's involved in this series. This is a three-issue storyline, and I think most of these are two- or three-issue storylines. They're starting to, like, drift into writing for trade at this point. Not quite there yet. Uh, but Iron Man's being targeted during this, and so is his little safe house thing. That safe house thing feels a lot like Batman and, um, you know, uh, the, the, the nurse who kind of helps him and all that. Uh, over the course of this and it, it kind of came out of nowhere this was not established uh in the prior issues here so there was that scene that i was showing before was actually uh tony stark at some fundraiser for some senator and that does come back uh to, to the plot later the plot's actually pretty well constructed on that level and i'm sorry i passed at the end of it um in in that it's set up there's a mystery of, of who done it and it turns out the senator's wife is uh, is covering for the senator because he likes to 
uh, have his little fun on the side and she just wants to you know have their power and so she's killing off any witnesses and so iron man has to deal with that it's very weird like this felt like a batman story or a green arrow story my girl's really known for his green arrow run it's, it's very like gritty street level stuff uh it doesn't feel right for iron man and iron man could have been replaced with any other hero over the course of that uh and that, that i was i was reading this and i'm like oh boy this is going to be an interesting run that maybe isn't going to work out so well but then we get into the book of 10 rings uh and this becomes a completely different storyline and completely different setup over the course of this and we have a new uh penciler and ryan odagawa here who's a little bit better i feel like this fits a little it feels a little less gritty feels a little uh feels a little more super heroic as iron man gets into this sort of uh kung fu realm <laughs> here and it turns out that this is the mandarin's son uh who is then inheriting the rings um and that is pretty cool uh so so we get this nice little plot about that iron man uh rescues this lady who i'm, I'm not familiar with she was not involved in the prior two omnibuses but i i guess she was probably from iron man before her name's uh, aisha and she's like uh been turned into a cyborg basically uh and she wants to die and uh, she blames Iron Man for all of her, her woes, of course. Um, and she kidnaps Pepper Potts uh, and hurts her. Uh, and this this ends up with a pretty gritty storyline. Again, you know, Mike Grell seems to like that a little bit, where uh, Pepper Potts, like, has uh, lost a baby due to the trauma of this. And that starts a, a, a subplot of quite a bit of interesting uh, drama between Happy Hogan and her and Iron Man as it combines, um, and, uh, Michael Ryan comes back here, I don't, I really, I don't think I like Michael Ryan's pencils, uh, it's just, it's just a little inconsistent, not, not nice to look at when it, when it was at the beginning and had that fill-in guy, Odagawa, I thought it was a little better, Iron Man looks a little too chonky here, you know, uh, but, uh, eventually it, it becomes a fight between Iron Man and, uh, the, uh, Son of the Mandarin. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Next storyline. Uh, <laughs> out of the bottle. Uh, and we go back. Uh, we have a different penciler now who is... Uh, he. My, oh, Mike Grell actually does his own pencils through this. I actually like Mike Grell's pencils pretty well. Uh, and this is just a, a side story of them uh, coming back uh, home. Sympathy for the Devil. All right. Next storyline. This and so that we are into a three-part storyline again. Ivan Rice takes over, and Ivan Rice is a very nice penciler. Uh, there's this whole blow-up in space. Uh, what's cool now is Mike Grell actually brings back uh, uh, his uh, Iron Man's girlfriend from Kurt Busiek's run. Now, uh, the last writer prior to this, you could tell he didn't like Iron Man with her. He really turned her into an unsympathetic character. It was pretty rude uh, at that point. But Mike Girl kind of brings it back to what Kurt Busiek was doing and, and brings back a lot of references from that time period, which I appreciate. Um, and this is this gets a little more into a nicer Iron Man feel than and out of that like sort of gritty stuff. And you see Iron Man now kissing Pepper Potts here. Well, that's not real. He's also referencing uh, there's a character from the prior omnibus uh, that like is making this AI sort of thing. And he's uh, trapping people within that AI, uh, within their dreams, basically. Um, and uh, Michael Ryan's back on this, which <laughs> is unfortunate. I wish Evan Rice was doing the whole storyline. Um, and so this, this billionaire guy's kind of in charge of that, like sort of VR dream world. And he hates Tony Stark and he's after him at this point, basically. So um, it's a three-part story, and, and uh, Iron Man's little girlfriend helps distract to get them back on track. Very nice storyline. Uh, felt very good. Um, now, this one is a very bizarre one, uh, which Iron Man gets. They find uh, an Iron Man uh, helmet in Stonehenge, and he gets sent back in time to Stonehenge. Uh, and we have another artist again. Looks like... Uh, Looks like, uh, oh, Mike Grell actually does the, the art on this. Gosh, I do like Mike Grell's art. I would uh, I would actually prefer he did the whole volume here. 
This is a weird storyline. He goes back in time and he's stuck and he's got like this witch back in time also. And then you see the skull inside there at the end. <laughs> oh man. I do like Mike Grell's pencils though. And uh, from back in their lab, they're trying to figure out uh, how to get Iron Man back basically. And they figure it out by the, the third chapter, of course. It would be very nice to just have this consistent art over the course of things. I really, I, the shading that he does is just really nice. Um, really cool. But this witch basically is uh, is a time traveler and she's, uh, you know, basically trying to get the Iron Man armor in the past so she can take over and rule the world, you know, that type of thing. And it ends up with a nice, like, sword in the stone callback, uh, which is kind of fun. All right, fun storyline, but uh, imminently doesn't matter too much. They, they destroy the, uh, the whole uh, uh, time machine so they can't use it again, of course. <laughs> All right, you can't always get what you want, part one. Uh, so, so it looks like Mike Grell is using Rolling Stones uh, titles for his stories at this point. Obviously, we had Sympathy for the Devil just a bit ago. So <laughs> it must have been what he wanted to do with this. Pretty fun. Uh, but Mike, Michael Ryan's back on pencils, which I, you know, don't love for the art again. And this one, uh, Iron Man is, uh, finds this whole, like, these, these, this ship's getting attacked and he gets brought in by shield to handle something, uh, and go down to the depths to figure out what's going on. And, uh, Rumiko, the girlfriend here, has a little moment with Pepper Potts and they don't like each other, of course, because they both want Iron Man's attention in reality but uh once he goes down there he's he's down there <laughs> he comes back and here we are so um this here is a crossover with thor that gets involved in this and thor's going kind of crazy and iron man has to fight it you don't get the whole storyline in here and that's kind of annoying uh they give a little conclusion of that right there um so i kind of just like skimmed over that one it was it's like what's the point if you're not getting the whole crossover and now we're back into manhunt uh which is iron man gets uh, accused of a crime of blowing up a chinese embassy and um he has to kind of figure out who's actually who done it so he can get back onto here who did the art on this one it's much better uh oh michael ryan actually did the pencils again i don't know maybe got maybe he was a little less rushed here Looks a little different. Bizarre, huh? And this is where Robin Laws starts to take things over. So Happy Hogan gets shot over the course of this manhunt, and then uh, it becomes really personal as Happy's about to die. Tony gets some problems and is about to die, and uh, eventually he kind of crawls out and figures things out. And uh, Mike Grell's pretty much off the book at this point. But he figure, he figures out, you know, who's the problem here and uh, and then takes care of it. This is actually a five-part story, as I recall. Yeah. And that closes out the run. Uh, Robin Laws uh, gets a lot of dialogue compared to Mike Grell. It does slow down the plot at some point. Um, oh, and it turns out the Mandarin's son is back. Now, he's not actually the bad guy here. He actually kind of realizes Iron Man's all right, and uh, they kind of fight together, which is a, a nice twist, uh, you know, especially since you read the beginning of the book. You know, they fought together, and that's it. And they, they uncover the villain together, and that is the end of that. Now, uh, I believe there are 14 issues left of this Iron Man volume uh, 2. I think it's volume 2. Uh, and it goes to issue 83, so maybe they'll collect that in another one, and you'll get the whole uh, kit and caboodle. I don't know. I haven't seen any solicits for that yet. But for now, this is it, and uh, pretty decent. Uh, I call this like a 7.5 out of 10. Pretty good. Uh, not great by any means, but it was worth the read. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.